Yeah, how has practice this week been with MJ quarterback? Yeah, we've had a good week, uh, good energy. Guys are uh, on offense, definitely taking on the different things that we've asked them to do. You know, it's um, it's a collective healing that needs to take place, and obviously there's a major change at that position. But all the positions are involved in this process of getting better and. It's been fun to see that. There's been a collective effort. Um, MJ does a great job from an energy standpoint of encouraging people he always has. But the guys around him understand they've got to pick up their play for the quarterback as well. Someone lost this week with MJ is that Marshall's a very solid team. And yeah. Do you kind of see any similarities to you know, your Northern Illinois yeah. squads where you were the 40, 41-year-old coach and now you're going against <laughs> yeah. the 40-year-old coach? Yeah, I told our team that. Like These were the games that we had circled on our our uh, schedule at Northern. We made a huge deal out of playing Power 5 teams. Uh, kids on our team were slighted in recruiting. That's how we talked to them. Nobody wanted you on that roster. No one recruited you on that roster. And so we know, you know, I've spoken to them about it, and we're going to get Marshall's best. You can point to the wins they've already had with Virginia Tech last year at Notre Dame. So, And then just the history of us playing them. Uh, when I was there, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but we went down 13-3, 20-10, and then had to come back to win the game. So we know, our team knows, um, that we're playing a good football team, and, and they're well-coached, they've got good players, and they'll come in here ready to play. What is the biggest thing defensively when you look at them trying to make them first? For their defense? No, no, your defense. Our defense? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really continued doing what we're doing. Um, we've played really well stopping the run. We've been excellent on third down. And I think the area that when you play Marshall, explosive plays, they've got some dynamic guys after the catch. Their quarterbacks are really good athletes. So scrambling around, our guy's got to be disciplined in coverage. If he does break the pocket and not let people get behind us, that's hurt us this year a couple times. But, you know, I think it's just a continuation. And, and our tackling in this game will be really, really important because there will be space plays. I gather you were able to add more to the Schedule. Yeah, I think we're playing next season. What's that going to be like in terms of? Dude, I'm worried about this weekend. Man. I hope I'm alive you know, by the end of the year. We'll see. I think uh, earlier this week or last week, you talked about some of the offensive plays that didn't end up working out because guys either ran their routes inside instead of outside or, or what have you. Um, what adjustments did you need to make in those areas? Was that like yeah, a mental mistake? Yeah, players need to do their jobs, you know. I mean, if we call for a certain route and we practiced it right all week and we get in the game, it should look like it did in practice. And so that's just, you know, at some point in time, you, you're going to coach all the little details and then they got to come alive. The players have to make them come alive. And so, you know, there's ownership from the coaches, there's ownership from the players. There's two parts to the equation. And so that part executing is what we're talking about, you know, if they press and you're supposed to release a certain way, then you need to do that for the quarterback because it gets confusing when the guy's expecting you to be here and you're there. Like for him, that's not a good thing, you know. So that happened a couple times, not a lot, but every play matters in a football game. Part of that ownership, not having penalties that yeah. really put you guys not staying on track. Yeah. So there's multiple kind of penalties. There's pre-snap focus penalties, uh, and we've had our share of those, not as many as we had in the past. The offensive holding penalties have been a problem. And so that's technique. Sometimes the refs call it more than other refs, you know, for a game. Some guys let you get away with more, and that's a player's responsibility to understand. These guys are calling it tight, and i got to keep my hands inside, and if the guy's getting away, I can't pull on him. And a player has to understand that. That's part of the game of football. It's no different than basketball. You get some games, and they can play more physical than other games. you got to understand how to adjust within the game. Obviously, we're not coaching guys to do that, you know, but that is part of the game, and we've got to grow in that area. It's been a year since MJ's played in a, a game, yeah. but what's maybe the biggest area of growth you've seen him? You know, I think uh, what he's been through to this point has been really good for him. I think being able to kind of take a breath coming off the injury and, and learn and absorb and mature and, and understand how important every little thing is He's preparing now like a vet. Whereas last year, he's like, oh my God, you know, I'm in. And, and he went in and did some good things, and then he went in and didn't do some good things. And I think he's learned a lot through the process. He's, he's matured, which is what you would expect from a second year player. And uh, he's just been so supportive uh, in the role that he had. And I think because of that, you know, the respect, not just from coaches and teammates, but 
the relationship that he and Brennan have is unique. You know, it's really special to see how those guys support each other. Speaking of that relationship, how significant is it to have such a, a good bond between those two? Yeah, I think, you know, in every position group, you want your room to be, uh, we're all, we say we're all brothers, right? But you want those guys to have each other's backs. And I think when you're in the same room, there's a different pressure that comes with each group, you know, like when you play quarterback, it's different. It is. And so the guys in our room got to have your back. And they got to be, you know, um, there to cheer you up. They got to be there to help you through it and understand. Because, like for MJ, he's played. He understands what that pressure feels like and what Brennan was going through in that moment. He understands how hard that was for him. And so he's been a great teammate. And uh, I know Brennan's excited for MJ. He told the offense that he would go play their butts off for him, and, which was a huge moment, you know, from a character and leadership standpoint to see that from Brennan. I mean, that one was, to hear that he did that was, was a huge thing. Early in the end, the plumber was not the most mobile guy. Right. This week, I think your defense is going to relish the opportunity of maybe getting 10 to 15 minutes on a running quarterback. You know, as a defensive player, you're not allowed to touch the quarterback until game day, right? <laughs> and so they like hitting that guy when they can. And, and I'm not saying cheap or anything like that, but you know, you get yelled at every day at practice for getting too close to the quarterback. Well, you get in the game and there is no too close to the quarterback anymore. And so we understand that all offenses flow through the trigger guy. And, and their guys, man, he had a great game last week. He's athletic and, and uh, he's a you know, guy that can throw the football. And He'll take off though. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, he's a state champion hurdler and he's, he's a good athlete. So each week it's a different challenge on defense. And I know our guys will be excited about this one. How much does it help to get Devin Boykin back this week yeah. with Sean Brown having missed the first half? Yeah, Devin's a coach. You know, his dad's a high school head coach. He comes in with a different uh, mindset as a football. as that football IQ and aptitude is really, really good. He's a communicator. And so having him out there, I think, is just for all the guys. He's a blue guy in the back end. He can direct traffic. He can play all three positions, nickel strong mm -hmm. and free. So he gives us flexibility in our package that way. And, so we're excited to have him back, you know, getting Rock back two weeks ago, getting him back, Dylan McMahon back. But we're starting to see some progress in our health, which is the right time to do that. When it comes to Sean Brown and that uh, appeal process, do you yeah. get an explanation at all about tomorrow? Yeah, no, they talked us through it. And uh, as a defenseless player, Sean's head was down. If there's any contact to the neck and the head, then they're going to call targeting. and. As much as we all thought it was a great play, because it was, his head was down. And so that was the ruling. And um, I'm not going to say I like that rule. I don't. But that is the rule. And so that's the decision that was made, and I support it. Coach, you talked about one and a spark out of your offense. Yeah. That's part of the reason you made the QB change. Is that something you can see in practice? Was there more of a spark? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I think MJ did a great job coming in and, and uh, understanding what we need. You know, mm -hmm. we needed to galvanize the guys, each group has their piece in this thing. Offensively, each position group has been challenged to do their job and, and help the quarterback and, and play what we call 11-man football. Just each guy, you know, in harmony playing together. Mm -hmm. And the synchronicity of the sport, when it flows the right way, you saw it on defense a week ago, it's just guys working together and making it look really good, you know? Yeah. And we can have the same thing on offense and we've seen spurts of it. But that's where we want to be. You know, we want to be a four-phase team, offense, defense, special teams, and then our sideline energy. Mm -hmm. And so that, that piece that we're missing is definitely prevalent in practice this week and how they went out there and went about their work. Would you say that the most important piece is, is that offensive line because you've got some guys sure. in there and everything? Yeah, I think everything on offense, uh, functional, the functionality of an offense, if you block better, each play looks better, okay? quarterback has more time to throw. The receiver has a better opportunity to get open, right? The running back has a bigger hole to run the ball through. It all starts with that. And so when those guys can function five as one in that group, and then you tie the tight ends in sometimes to the blocking schemes, it helps everybody. It does. And so having Dylan back in the middle will help that. Cooper now moving the guard so he can take the experiences he had at center, but Dylan now telling you know, the protections he doesn't have that mental piece now. He can just play. I think you're going to see a different group. Is that good, everybody?